friend, and welcome to the 10 Minute Mind Shift Podcast. I'm your host, Janet Cagle, certified life coach, business strategist, and lover of all things related to up leveling my life and yours. My goal is to help you experience a mind shift that gets you one step closer to your goals, whatever they are. My goal is not to keep you wrapped up in self-help all day, just 10 minutes. And who doesn't have 10 minutes, right? Welcome back, my friends, to the 10 Minute Mind Shift Podcast. This is episode 18, all about the abundant mindset. I love working with people in the area of balance and abundance. And last week, I received a great question. How do I know if I have a scarcity mindset or an abundant mindset? And how do I create an abundant mindset exactly? So we are going to dive in and talk all about that. So where does scarcity and lack and feelings of insufficiency come from anyway? Well, just like most everything else, it comes from the primal part of the brain. The primal part of the brain is wired for survival. This is the part of the brain that's going to do whatever it has to do in order to keep you alive. But let's be honest. If you're listening to this podcast, you're likely not living in a survival mode. You are most likely in a climate controlled environment within 30 seconds of a food source at any given time. You have plenty to eat and drink and a comfy bed to rest in. You are not worried about being attacked by a wild animal and most likely not worried about making it through the winter. So this part of our primitive survival brain isn't very useful most of the time in our modern society. Scarcity is part of our brain's primal wiring. Its purpose was to keep us thinking we didn't have enough so that we would continue to do those things that are relevant for survival. There was a time when resources were short and we needed to worry about getting enough food, warmth, meeting a person and procreating. We don't need to worry about that any longer. The old wiring of not enough was what motivated us to go out and get more to survive. Doing things for survival stimulates the reward center of your brain and it thinks it's doing its thing. So when you're doing something for survival, your brain gives you that little tap into your dopamine and immediately your brain is rewarded. When you have a thought that creates a desire and then you go fill that desire, your brain's reward center is triggered and you keep repeating the cycle. So this cycle used to be very useful and it was very helpful in us evolving into our current state, but it's not necessary anymore. In fact, the same wiring left unchecked and unmanaged will keep us from evolving into our highest and best self. In fact, It's the same driver to all of the over buffering behavior of overeating, over drinking, overspending, gambling, you name it. So how do you know if you have a scarcity mindset? Here's a little test. Are you human? Do you have a brain? We all have a scarcity mindset tendency to varying degrees around different things. A few years ago, when I was working on cravings and urges, I recognized my scarcity mindset around food. I would consume way beyond full because my scarcity mindset was uncomfortable with throwing food out. I would justify it by thinking that it's wasteful or disrespectful to throw food away. But here's the truth. Me overeating did not help anyone in a third world country. Me over consuming beyond full because I was uncomfortable with throwing food away was creating a problem for me. Seeing treats in the break room that I was not hungry for would trigger the urge to grab one because I didn't want to miss out. I would grab one for now and grab one for later. As if I was missing something if I didn't. Fear of missing out is a scarcity mindset. Scarcity also shows up at work and in relationships. We think we do more than someone else or that we give more or we sacrifice more and compromise more. We keep score in our minds and we only see what we give up or how our life is weighted differently for us. We might feel like we don't get enough time or attention, appreciation or affection from relationships. Can you see a theme here? Listen, first of all, 
knowing that nothing has gone wrong and that you are not broken, know that it's just the primal biology at play here. It's old wiring. We are all on the scalar spectrum to varying degrees, but here are some things that you can start thinking about, and then we will start moving that needle for you in the right direction. But here's why it matters. You cannot create a life of abundance with a scarcity mindset. You will never create abundance in any area, whether it's health, wealth, or relationships from feelings of lack and insufficiency. In future episodes, I'm even going to give you some exact phrases to think and to say and what to stop thinking and stop saying. But this week, first things first. Number one, be aware this week of your dominant thoughts and dominant emotions. Self-awareness is the secret sauce. I say this all the time. Awareness is king. We don't consciously go around feeling, feeling our feelings or examining our thoughts. Turns out it's a very important first step in creating a different result in any area of our life. Until we bring awareness into our day, our thoughts and our emotions are just coming and going unnoticed until we get highly triggered to move off center. For example, someone says or does something that makes you feel something, then you become very aware of that feeling like anger, resentment or even the feel good emotion like joy. But in general, we don't think about how we are feeling. I want you to change that up this week. I want you to make a list of your dominant thoughts and the emotions that are triggered by those thoughts. Really tap into them, write them down, walk around with a journal if you have to. When I was preparing for this podcast, I was looking at my notes from a few years ago when I did this exercise. And a few years ago, here were a few things that I wrote down. I was feeling bitter, angry, resentful, scared, miserable, pissed, ornery. I was thinking thoughts like, this isn't fair, and that's so disrespectful, and she's so annoying, and why can't he just change? If he would just, and you can just fill in the blank in any of these sentences, we would get along better. Why can't my life be like hers? When you bring awareness to the volume and the content of what you're feeling and thinking, you will start seeing where scarcity and thoughts of insufficiency are existing, and then you can get to work on them. In my case, I was always thinking that I didn't have enough time to do the things that I wanted to do, that I needed more money for the things that I wanted to do, that I was going to have to defend what my wants and my desires were to my husband, to my boss, to my friends. And this bubbled up big time in 2016, the first time that Steve and I talked about moving to our final retirement destination, and we had landed on it being Florida. At first, I was so excited about the prospect of change, and then scarcity showed up. I had five horses and I was really involved in showing. I had just done my first ever Western Dressage World Show and placed fifth. I started feeling my thoughts go to, we won't be able to afford my horses in Florida. Florida is too expensive. I won't have there what I have here. I felt very much like I was going to have to give up my dreams for the sake of moving to Florida. At one point, I made a list of all the things that I wanted to have for my horses when we moved to Florida. I was actually trying to do it from a place of abundance and putting things on there that I didn't even have right now. I thought I was doing it from a place of abundance, but the whole thing backfired. And I ended up being so scared of not having any of it that I put the list away and we stopped talking about moving to Florida. Our scarcity mindset talked us right out of it. You can listen to all the details in episode eight to see how it all worked out. Number two, notice what comes up for you when someone else gets something that your heart desires. I remember growing up and my aunt would say, I wish I had that and they had a nickel. It was from a place of either they can have it or we can have it, but we both can't have. I heard phrases like the haves and the have nots, and I clearly felt like a have not. Pay attention to what you feel in the area of emotion and jealousy when you see what other people get that you might want. Now, we don't like to admit when we feel that way, but when I look at it, I look at it as an indicator and I love indicators. Jealousy is just what we desire. It's what we think that we can't have, but our heart desires it. So you see a house that you love, but you don't think that you could ever have it or a car or even a relationship that someone else has. Your brain thinks that you can't create the outcome of your heart's desire. 
That's it. It bubbles up as jealousy. Instead of beating yourself up, just notice it. Maybe it's a job that someone else has or an income, or maybe it's someone else being at their ideal weight. Think about when someone buys a new car or new ho- or new house. Are you genuinely happy for them or do you kind of blister up on the inside and talk about how foolish they are with their money? The answers that are revealed to you this week will tell you where you have work to do in the area of scarcity and abundance. Here is my parting thought. You are manifesting your life right now, whether you know it consciously or not. You are creating your tomorrow self today. You are the one who is creating, inviting, and attracting the result that you are getting or not getting. You are allowing or blocking abundance through your thoughts and your emotions. And awareness is king. So if you are ready to take this work to the next level, then you should totally check out Life by Design Academy. It's my one-on-one coaching program designed to help you create the life of balance and abundance, a life that your heart desires. Be sure to click on the link in my show notes and let's chat. All right, my friends, have the best week ever. That's a wrap of the 10 minute mind shift podcast. I hope that you were able to experience your own mind shift today. Listen, if you're ready to take this work to the next level, I highly recommend Life by Design Academy. It's my one-on-one coaching program that offers you a transformation at the speed of life.